This demonstration is going to cover how to use the tiger stop saw in the uh, wood shop. The tiger stop is set up only to cross cut. We never rip on this machine. In other words, when I have a piece of wood, if you're looking at the lines of grain that go this direction, we only cut across those lines. I can't put a piece of wood in here this way and cut and uh, do a rip cut because the blade, first of all, isn't set up to make that kind of cut. And secondly, it's not wide enough to stay stable inside. So here's kind of how you use the machine. Nothing works on the machine. You can't move the stops or set anything unless it's turned on. So there's two things to turn on on this one, unlike the others. We actually have a computer console right here that you simply push on and everything pops up and then you can type in what you want. I have it set all the way to the end, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit closer. Say I want 20 and a half inches. I can just type in 20 and a half is 0.5 and press start and the stop slides down. This thing is accurate to about a 64th of an inch, so it is a very nice saw. Then to turn on the motor, we actually need the blade to be running, you have to pull out this, this off switch. You have to twist it and it pops out and then you can turn it on just by pushing power on. Now, we're going to use it here in a second, but let me give you some of the other features about it. <clears throat> the saw can cut up to 10 inches wide, a board actually from front to back, 10 inches wide. But I have the machine preset to only cut down to 8 inches. Anything smaller than that and it'll give you a, a warning, a minimum limit warning. So let's say I tried 6 and typed it in, it'll say min lim right there for a moment. Means I've exceeded the minimum limit. The maximum limit of this is just how long the table is, it's about 118 inches but most of our projects aren't that big anyway. So, um, we have to stay above 8 inches. The, and I am going through this in order. The sawdust that you get, and when you cut, of course every machine makes sawdust, you end up with a, a decent pile of it on the table. So let me bring that down a little bit further. If I get a pile of sawdust right here on the table, and attempt to cut a piece of wood while it's sitting on top of it, like that. The board is actually up off the table just a little bit, which means if this is high, it means the angle of the cut will change slightly. Also, if I have sawdust behind the board against this fence area, then my board isn't sitting flat, it's actually pulled out slightly. And again, I have the same problem, now my blade is angled the wrong way, and it doesn't give me a square cut. So take just a moment, blow the excess sawdust out of the way. If there's a little there, of course, it's not going to make that big a difference, but if you have a big pile of it, then it becomes a problem. It'll change your measurements and it's, it makes it tougher to get a nice square cut. Now, most of our first cuts on this machine are going to be a rough cut. It means whatever you want, if I want 20 inches, you add an inch, so set it to 21. Most of our first cuts are a rough cut because nothing is square on the board and we want the extra to be able to cut down to our proper size. In addition, when you pull a piece of wood off the back rack, look for on the ends um, cracks. Here's a decent sized crack. It goes to about here. In addition, I don't want a big knot at the end of my board. So if I cut this off, now I have a knot here that is basically the same as a crack in the wood and I don't want to deal with that. So it's up to you how much you have to cut off and what you can deal with, but de never have a crack in the end. So if uh, this is the factory end, this came, this is the end, it's never been cut, I would actually stick it in the saw and cut all of it off and throw this away. I don't, I don't need it, I don't want it, it's cracked, it's full of a knot and I don't want it. Now, because the saw cannot cut anything less than 8 inches, this is more like 6, I don't have to use the measurement for this first cut. I'm not measuring anything. Simply turn on the machine and I'm just going to push it down so the blade is about by my eye in the right place. So you stoop down and that's about in the right place. I haven't measured a thing. I just stuck it in there and that's approximately right. So to use it, you turn on the motor and then you're going to hit a pedal which is by your foot. Now you don't have to keep your foot on the pedal the whole time. When I press the pedal the blade will come up and cut and then it will drop down. If my foot is on the pedal the whole time the blade comes up and stays up until I let go of the pedal and then it will drop back down. So turn off the brake, turn on the machine and then push the pedal. All the way back. So the blade comes up and down, this lets up and now I can move the board. So now, I cut off the knot 
And my eyeball got close, so there's a little bit more there, so simply put it in again. If you need to make another cut, that's okay. Turn it back on, and then cut again. Now, one of the questions on the test says, what happens if I get a tiny little sliver of wood caught under the saw, which I have right now? I don't want to put my hand underneath here to get it, or even back here. Um, anywhere, if your hand is underneath the blade, you're just, it's too unsafe. It's too easy to accidentally hit the pedal and to injure yourself. So how do I get it out of there? Well, simply, I would simply take the board that you've cut or uh, find a piece of scrap. It doesn't matter. I have lots of it right there. Simply just push it out right there, and there it is. And there's the rest of my knot. And I can crack it easy, which means that the, the crack was in there, and I don't see it anymore on the board. If I look at the end, I don't see any cracks. It means I got it all. So that looks good. Now I would measure from here to whatever length I'm looking for. Because this knot is way in the center, I don't have to worry about it, like if it's at the end. That's a problem. Continuing through, sometimes we get <clears throat> a jammed blade. Now what I mean by that is usually somebody will set the saw and say, go all the way down to eight. They put their board in there, but they forget to turn the machine on, and then I hit the pedal. Now, what's happening is this drops down and tries to cut, and the blade, of course, is up and sticking in the wood, but since it's not moving, it can't go anywhere. Now, my board is stuck. I can't move it, so we got to get it out of there somehow. It's as simple as, this is a bypass for the uh, air that makes this all run. So simply lift up. There. This comes up, and now I can <clears throat> pull the board out. It's hard to see, but there is a tooth mark right there where the blade tried to cut it off. So now the blade has dropped back down again, but since I bypassed the air, I have to reset the air, which is right here. There's a green button right here. Simply press that once, and it resets the computer, the air system. So now I can turn it on, slide it in, and then make my cut, and it works just fine. Okay, so there's my 8-inch piece that I told it to cut. For this thing to run properly, you've got to have both things running. The computer console, this, and the blade. If one of them's not running, it doesn't work. I can't set this if this isn't on, and I can't cut it if the blade isn't running. So they both have, both have, to, be, uh, have to be moving, have to be on. <clears throat> when you put a board in there, Make sure that it's as far back against the fence as it can be. If I have it pulled out like this when I cut, remember the, uh, the same problem with sawdust behind it, it tilts and so your cut now instead of being square, it's actually cutting like this, which gives you a bad end and it messes up all your measurements. So make sure it is back against the, uh, the back fence as much as possible. Um, the rest of this, the the one of the uh, couple of questions on the safety test is what is the main job of the tiger saw? It is meant to cross cut to either a rough or exact length. Now since we don't have a good flat edge, it's, we're doing rough cutting. If I had a nice smooth edge that is perfectly straight like the jointer does, which is our next machine, I can put that back against the fence and set exactly what I need and it'll cut exactly square. It does a really good job. Um, I believe I've covered everything on this. On your safety test, you need to get 100%. So remember, if you have any questions, to ask first. The Tiger Saw is a great addition to our shop because it's completely covered, and the only way to really hurt yourself is if you physically put your hand under there and then press the pedal, which I like because it's got a lot of redundancy. It's hard to do both of them at the same time, and it does give me a nice, smooth, and accurate cut. One other item about this machine that's really nice is, once it's on, you can actually put measurements in both decimal and fraction. So if I know that I want 10 and a half and I know the decimal form, I simply type in 10.5 and hit start, and the machine moves to 10 and a half. Let's say 12 and a quarter, 12.25, and the same thing. Now, once in a while, you get to 5 eighths of an inch, and a lot of us don't know 5 eighths. So you can do a fraction. So let's say 15 and 5 eighths. 15 space 5 slash 
eight and hit start. Five eighths is point six two five, and that's exactly where it puts it in the right place. Same with sixteenths, twenty and one sixteenth. Twenty space one over sixteen. Now remember, if that space isn't there, the computer thinks it's two hundred and one over sixteen, and it doesn't know what to do with that. I mean, that's that's a number that it can't handle. So hit start, and that is a sixteenth of an inch. So you can put in both fractional and decimal form numbers depending on what you're more comfortable with.